This is Plant-Based Briefing, a targeted approach to turn your friends vegan. A study summary by Elena Schaller at Faunalytics.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, host of this curated content plant-based podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles related to plant-based and vegan living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. Today's article is from Faunalytics.org. They're a nonprofit providing animal advocates with data to understand how people think about and respond to advocacy and provide the best strategy to inspire change for animals. They conduct studies of their own and they have an extensive online research library that's free and has summaries of thousands of research articles and studies. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. A targeted approach to turn your friends vegan. A study summary by Elena Schaller at Faunalytics.org. Original study published August 12, 2022 in Science Direct by Christopher J. Bryant, Anaya M.B. Prosser, and Julie Barnett. Many unique barriers prevent people from making the switch to veganism. This article uses behavior change research to explore how to overcome challenges at each stage of the meat reduction journey. Animal advocates know that farmed animals suffer. The conditions they face in the animal agriculture industry are barren, gruesome, and inhumane. What's more, many people are aware of this. One study found that as many as 70% of U.S. consumers have some discomfort when thinking about animals in the food system. However, the vast majority continue to eat them. When considering the journey to veganism, it helps to use a framework for behavior change. The authors of this study explored meat reduction using the trans-theoretical model, TTM. This model is often applied to harmful behaviors such as smoking or drug abuse, but it can easily be adapted to explore meat reduction. Six stages of change are outlined by the model. 1. Pre-contemplation. The person is not yet considering the behavior change. 2. Contemplation. The person is thinking about their behavior and whether they want to change it. 3. Preparation. The person has decided to change and plans to do so in the next six months. 4. Taking action. The person has taken steps to change in the last six months. 5. Maintaining change. The person has adopted the new behavior, but there may be temptation to lapse. And 6. Long-term adoption. The person has integrated the new behavior permanently. In this paper, the authors examined the social and psychological barriers to reducing meat consumption at every stage of the TTM. Their goal is to help advocates overcome these barriers to guide individuals toward veganism based on where they're at in the process. Although many animal advocates use environmental and health motivations to encourage veganism, this study focuses on moral reasons only. Stage 1. Pre-contemplation At this stage, meat eaters may be unaware of the harms of their behavior. For these people, providing knowledge about the harms of meat consumption and animal agriculture may be enough to move them to the next stage of the TTM. Research has found a strong link between knowledge of animal agriculture and concerns for animals. However, other people may know what farmed animals go through, but actively avoid thinking about it. For these people, the solution may be raising their consciousness. Advocates can remind them of their food source by using animals' names, example cows, instead of the food names, example beef, or showing images of farmed animals as meat reminders. It's important to share this information in unavoidable locations like advertisements and billboards. Stage 2. Contemplation. Here, meat eaters are considering making a change in their diet in the near future. Common barriers at this stage are motivated reasoning and biases. With motivated reasoning, people who are strongly committed to eating meat may reject evidence that animal agriculture is cruel. There are several different types of biases, including self-serving bias, where people under-report the amount of meat they eat so they can maintain positive beliefs about themselves, and status quo bias, where people continue eating meat because, quote, that's the way things have always been done, unquote. Another barrier occurs when meat-eating is ingrained in a culture or social norms. To overcome these barriers, advocates should present information in a way that isn't accusatory. One idea is to ask people what would change their minds, giving consumers an opportunity to reflect on their own biases. While overcoming the cultural and social aspects of meat consumption are more difficult, research consistently shows that flipping social norms to promote veganism can be effective. 3. Preparation This stage occurs when meat-eaters make plans to change their diet. Habit and willpower are two barriers that prevent progress. 
Even if someone is highly motivated to change, it can be easy to act out of habit. Key to overcoming both of these barriers lies in planning ahead of time. Advocates can encourage people to avoid keeping meat around the house, for example, or keep a supply of pre-made vegan food items on hand so there's no excuse to purchase meat when someone's in a hurry or doesn't feel like cooking. 4. Taking Action Although it's promising when people take concrete actions to change their diet, the early stages can be especially difficult for new vegans. Food is an important part of how people think about themselves, and many former meat eaters may not be ready or willing to be called a vegan. For this reason, it's important to make vegan eating as inclusive as possible. Those who work in the food industry should avoid labeling food for one specific group, and advocates can help new vegans slowly adjust to their new identity. Number five, maintaining change. For people who have successfully stopped eating meat, the biggest barrier to permanent change is usually having a supportive social network. If someone isn't surrounded by others who share their values and support their habits, they may fall back into old ways. Advocates should encourage membership in vegan communities such as online veg groups or local community groups. It's important for animal advocates to be strategic in how they apply their interventions. What's appropriate for a young college student may not work for a middle-aged parent with multiple children in the house. Advocates also need to recognize that not everyone follows the steps of TTM in the same way, and most people don't follow them consciously. Having a wide range of tools at your disposal will help you be prepared, no matter what type of meat eater you're working with. You just listened to A Targeted Approach to Turn Your Friends Vegan, a study summary by Elena Schaller at faunalytics.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and as always, I put a link to the original post in the show notes. And from there, you can link to the original study and read the whole thing as well. And I thought this was such great information. I know so many people in the contemplation stage where they know that there's some cruelty built in. They may not know the extent of it, though. And more challenging oftentimes is they just believe it's necessary and it's part of our culture. It's the normal thing to do. I was stuck there for years myself. I didn't really know the truth. I didn't know all the details, but I was definitely afraid of it and definitely avoiding searching it out. So I really appreciate the suggestions to keep the information front and center and make it unavoidable and remind people of their food source. Don't say, do you eat chicken? Say, do you eat chickens? And instead of pork, do you eat pigs? Or do you eat baby pigs? And the part about the social norms is so difficult. I like how they say, to overcome these barriers, advocates should present information in a way that isn't accusatory and ask people what would change their minds, get them thinking and answering open-ended questions. That reminds me of the Anonymous for the Voiceless approach. I do a lot of street outreach activism with them, where we basically have cubes of truth, they're called, but we're basically showing footage from the film Dominion. It's, you know, industry standard footage, and it shows the horrors of animal agriculture and people walking by who approach us. We engage them in a conversation and we ask them if they've ever seen footage like this before and how does it make them feel? And is it safe to say you're against animal abuse? And do you think it's possible to be against animal abuse while at the same time paying for it? Those kinds of things. So it just engages people in conversation. And another part that resonated with me was about flipping norms to promote veganism because the norms right now are obviously all focused around eating meat, dairy, and eggs. But because I've taken the Liberation Pledge, I just explained to people that I cannot eat with them if that's what they're eating, but would they join me in a vegan meal? So it's about expanding the vegan table, not necessarily sitting alone at it. And it's been interesting because so many people have never had a vegan meal or don't realize they have. And they're curious and interested, and it's a safe space for them to ask questions and try different things when they may not be as comfortable doing so when everyone else around them is eating meat. And if you want to check out other episodes about the Liberation Pledge, check out episode 100, 314, and 327. And the non-accusatory part also struck a chord with me, especially when I'm doing activism on social media because while I try to be informative and non-accusatory, I also try to be direct. And sometimes, though, my anger can get the best of me. I mean, when I really let myself think about what happens every minute of every day to innocent, defenseless animals, it's so heinous and so unforgivable. 
It's overwhelming, as you all know, but this post is great for us to see data and see what is working and what's not working and helps us tweak some of our approaches. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit and thanks for listening.